Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a new discovery from a relatively nearby star system, the system known as TOI 700, or TESS Object of Interest 700, where the scientists have recently identified another really intriguing planet, potentially Earth-like planet, orbiting in the habitable zone of the star. Which actually makes the star system one of the most exciting nearby stars, because it seems to contain two planets, with potentially Earth-like conditions in the region of the star system where we do expect liquid water and maybe even atmosphere. And so let's talk about this discovery in a little bit more detail, and let's actually talk about some other exciting star systems that in the last few years the scientists have identified as having a really high chance to maybe contain an Earth-like planet with maybe liquid water. Although naturally, as of 2023, none have been confirmed so far, and even the atmosphere around these planets has not been seen just yet. But first, a little bit more about the star system itself and why it's kind of exciting. First of all, the star system is not really too close and not too far, just over 100 light years away from planet Earth, which does put it in the same galactic neighborhood as the solar system, but definitely a little bit on the farther side. I'll actually mention a few really exciting star systems that are closer to us near the end of the video. But unlike a lot of other star systems, especially the ones with red dwarfs, this star is about 40% the mass of our Sun, with a radius of about 55%, and so it's actually a little bit larger than most red dwarfs. It's a little bit closer to the K-type star, and as a result it's actually not as active as a typical M-dwarf, or M-type star, and as of today has never been observed to produce major flares or major eruptions. In contrast, the nearest red dwarf, Proxima Centauri, about 4 light years away from us, is what's known as a flare star. Even though it contains a potentially terrestrial planet in the habitable zone as well, the amount of radiation, X-rays and UV light it produces is several hundred times higher than what the Sun produces, suggesting that any planet in a star system would really not be habitable at all. But TOI 700 seems to be a little bit milder, although not as mild as the Sun. It receives hundreds of times less radiation than anything in the Proxima Centauri system. It also receives about 50 times less UV light than TRAPPIST-1e, the other terrestrial planet in the habitable zone of TRAPPIST-1 system, but about 35 times more than planet Earth. Which does present a bit of a problem for any planet in this star system as well. Increased radiation suggests that it's much easier for atmosphere and water to disappear with time, but definitely a lot more promising than other red dwarfs. The star also seems to be much younger than a lot of other red dwarfs, possibly being only about 1.5 billion years old, which basically means that it has quite a lot to go, with the planets potentially changing with time as the star transforms as well. In contrast, the solar system is about 4.5 billion years old, and a lot of other red dwarfs are even older. But when it comes to the properties of this newly discovered planet, first of all it's about 10% smaller than the previously discovered planet D, the one located in the habitable zone as well, and approximately 95% the size of planet Earth. So both planet D and planet E are extremely Earth-like in size and potentially in mass, although planet D is a little bit more massive. For planet D, a single orbit is about 37 days, for the newly discovered planet E, it's about 28 days. And the other two planets, B and C, are obviously much closer, with one being a little bit smaller than Earth, and one, planet C, being about two and a half times bigger. So definitely a pretty exciting star system, and potentially even more exciting than a lot of other red dwarfs, because during the observations for several years, the TESS telescope has not actually observed any major emissions. In other words, no emissions that would be potentially dangerous to the atmosphere or to the liquid water on the surface, making this a relatively mild star. It was also discovered that the planets don't seem to have a perfect resonance, which does imply that maybe there's something else, a little bit farther away, pulling at the planets, preventing them from having a stable orbit. So there might be a few more planets hiding on the outskirts. But as this illustration suggests, all of these planets, including planets in a lot of other star systems similar to this, are most likely extremely different from planet Earth. The newly discovered planet might resemble something like this. It's tidally locked and extremely hot on one side, and obviously much colder on the other side with the planet D maybe resembling an eyeball planet, assuming of course that there is any liquid water. As of today, even after years of investigation, no signs of any liquid water or even atmosphere have been so far discovered around any red dwarf planet, and actually some of the most recent observations from the TRAPPIST-1 system as of right now discovered unfortunately nothing. Which doesn't mean that these planets do not have water or do not have atmosphere, it just means that it seems to be a little bit more difficult to identify it or maybe the atmosphere is just very different from what we expected. 
We obviously have no idea what these planets are like, and all of this is just based on our understanding of what should happen here, and what all of this might resemble. These star systems, which by the way are the most common star systems in a galaxy, are just so different from anything we have in the solar system. Or I guess the other way around. The solar system is just really weird. And even though the scientists for many years have been saying the opposite, because of these new discoveries, it just makes it pretty clear that the solar system is the weird one in the galaxy, not the other way around. But still, there's a really high chance that these are terrestrial planets, and that they might to some extent resemble one of the terrestrial planets in the solar system. Although, like I've mentioned in previous videos, calling them terrestrial planets is still a bit of a misnomer. Here, it really comes down to geology. The actual composition of rocks and the actual minerals are also really, really important. For example, one of the reasons planet Earth even has liquid water on the surface is because of very specific minerals with very specific concentration in the upper crust and in the mantle. And through various types of volcanism, some of the water gets released over time, staying on the planet just long enough to create the oceans. I mean, I'm kind of simplifying this, but that's one of the main factors to consider. So the mineral composition is also really important. For all we know, these could be terrestrial, but made out of some really strange mineral that absorbs water and does not let it out. But there's really no way to determine this just yet. The only possible way of answering this right now is if we actually discover some kind of an asteroid coming from another star system, possibly a red dwarf, crashing somewhere on planet Earth and basically revealing to us what some of these planets are made from. But at the moment, nobody has discovered any of these asteroids yet. Which means that our understanding of these planets are still technically just scientific assumptions. There is really no way to test this just yet. Nevertheless, based on the observations from the star, the initial calculations did suggest that if there is atmosphere, it should be able to survive for at least 1 billion years. So maybe the atmosphere could be discovered here in the future by further more detailed observations from the James Webb Space Telescope. Although in this case, because of the distances and the size of the planet, the amount of transmission spectra produced may unfortunately be not enough to determine exactly what the atmosphere is made from. And so at least for now, this planet and the star system itself are just really exciting, but are going to remain unknown to us for a very long time. Nevertheless, there are still quite a lot of other planets, even closer to us, in other star systems that are also quite exciting. And at least one is around a sun-like star. We've discussed this back in the days, and there should be a video about this in the description, but it's a star system known as Tau Ceti, that also potentially contains several planets, with at least one in the habitable zone as well. Although in this case, it might be a super-Earth, or a planet a little bit more massive than planet Earth, and way, way more dense as well. And then we also have a few really exciting red dwarfs, within about 50 light years away from planet Earth, all containing multiple planets, and at least one in the habitable zone. We have Gliese 1061, although in this case the actual orbit of the planet is a little bit more eccentric. We have Wolf 1061, with at least one massive planet in the habitable zone. Gliese 581, with a somewhat massive super-Earth located in the habitable zone as well, which back in the days was one of the first ever discovered. There's also an exciting triple star system, Gliese 667, where one of the stars seems to contain an exciting exoplanet as well. Another red dwarf, LHS 1140, with a super-Earth in the habitable zone, and the most famous ones, Proxima Centauri, the closest star to us, and Trappist-1, that contains seven terrestrial planets, with at least three in the habitable zone. And that's of course just the discoveries from the last 10 years. Chances are we're going to have a lot more in the next few years, because the TESS telescope is still continuously looking for even more planets. And so chances are you might discover a few more in the next few years. But for now, that's pretty much it. Another super exciting star system to add to the list of exciting star systems that we've discussed in a lot of previous videos you can find in the description. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.